Hello everyone, I'm Rishi Passad. Welcome back to Racing Weekly, a podcast and YouTube show brought to you by Odds Checker in association with Bet365. Steve Ryder in his usual position alongside me and delighted to welcome Gavin Lynch to the show. We'll be hearing more from them in just a moment, but uh, it is with a heavy heart that we start this programme on a sombre note uh, with the news that Graham Lee, who suffered a horrendous fall last week, uh, currently in intensive care. Uh, the outlook, we don't know what it is. All we can do is send our very best wishes to Graham and his family. Our thoughts are most definitely with them at what is a very tough and trying time for he and his family. Uh, Gavin, Steve, the racing game does go on and we have had a lot of very good racing to reflect on over the last week, which is where we'll be starting in just a moment. But overall, are you excited about what you're seeing so far? Is it is it giving you a... The, the buzz, the feels, as they say, for what's to come? Yeah, absolutely. When you look at all the novice hurdlers we've seen in the last week, we've a lot to go through. And the novice chasers, um, races like the Royal Bond, etc., that are coming up soon are going to be top class. So, yeah, it's it's starting certainly started with a bang anyway. Um, and, Steve, I, we'll get to the fact that you've started off with a bang yourself last week, we are tipping a winner. Um, but it, it's I, I, I'm really enjoying the fact that Gordon Elliott's flexing his muscles, Paul Nichols flexing his muscles, Willie Mullins to flex, it's quite exciting. Yeah, that's what you need in the game. You need Gordon Elliott fire and, and, and going against Willie Mullins and you need Nicky Henderson to, to kind of start doing the same against Paul Nichols. You know that Gordon Elliott's always going to target that down Royal meeting. I think he had, what, six on the Friday mm. and five on the Saturday. Yeah. Um, and Paul Nichols, yeah, mopped up Wing Canton. So, yeah, we just need Nicky and, and, and Willie to, to start releasing their big guns. Yeah, it's uh, plus a change as far as Gordon Elliott and Paul Nichols are concerned. Um, and it is time for this week's Racing Recap. This week's Racing Recap starts at Aintree. And we'll start with Steve because, of course, he put up Guess Gill uh, as a, a pretty confident selection. Um, never had too many concerns, despite the fact that it wasn't quite the Grand Sefton that we expected at the start of the week. No, the low sun, obviously, yeah took its effect but it was good that it actually went ahead we at the time of recording we were kind of <laughs> yeah didn't didn't know if the race would actually get ahead um there was no re never really a, a moment's doubt for Gaskill. um even though they've taken out some fences kind of him and, and percussion both both were towards the head of the market and mm. towards the the head of the finishing places um yeah never really a concern jumped really well um apparently not heading back to the beach of chase uh, this year, apparently Grand National might be their target, but it'll have to go up a bit in the weights. Obviously, connections, I think, are a bit concerned around the fact that obviously reduced field size this yeah. year. They need to go up in the ratings to actually get into it. But no, it's kind of form going forward. I, I wouldn't really think it's too strong. I, I, I like to think of those Grand National races as kind of separate entities, um, the Beecher and, and the Topham. Um, yeah. But yeah, good performance. Nice to, nice to land a winner and uh, yeah, we move on. Uh, Grand National horse? You think? Possibly, as you say, will he get into the race? He's now run over the fences four times. He jumps them really well. He was second twice last year and he won the other day. Uh, the thing I noticed from watching the race was that how well, basically, it, most horses jump the fences. The national fences aren't what they are, or yeah. what they were, as we all know. So to get around and to jump well seems easy peasy these days. Yeah, there was a bit of chat afterwards about some of the jockeys saying that the Grand National was, was indeed, a, the Grand National fences, a little bit on the easy side. I mean... They've yeah, made modifications a, a, a few years ago, but it's been pretty much the same as it has been for the last few years. Do you think it's is it any easier in the last, this year than it was in comparison to the uh, last few years? It's hard to know, but it's certainly that they, they jumped those fences uh, very easily the other day. They have to be careful that if they, if they make it too easy that they'll go too fast for injuries and stuff. So it's a balancing act between not making it too dangerous, but um, hopefully they get soft ground on the day to slow them up a bit. But certainly the fences are easier to jump, yeah. All right, let's talk about the Badger Beer at Wing Canton. Uh, Black Jack Magic uh, held off the Nichols pair. Um, Antin Hannibal had a, had a pretty good day on a day that Paul Nichols dominated again. Yeah, Rex Dingle as well. Yeah, rode, rode in really well and, and won on Good Luck Charm later on on the card. I thought that was good form. I thought for under 3-5, travelled really well into mm. the race. I thought it was a big danger coming back to the last. Um, and you've kind of got the two core specialists finishing third and fourth. You had Frodo on obviously finishing third. And certainly Red finished in fourth, who had brilliant Wink Anton form. So I think form going forward, that's a race that I would I would really kind of um, be confident going forward. Um, you'd imagine horse, um, races like the Ultima, 
mm -hmm. going forward would be a long-term target for, for both of them. But yeah, good for Anthony Honeyball and, and Rex Dingle. Any clues out of that race for you, Gav? Uh, I like Gav? the winner considering the fact that he was off uh, 132, I think was his rating. So therefore, if he goes up to say 140, as you say, a race like the Ultima uh, could be within his grasp later on the season. He stayed very well. He powered through the line. So yeah, he did quite well, yeah. Um, I'll come to you about the elite hurdle because we're pretty strong on our hurdlers this side of the <laughs> side of the RFC. Obviously, yeah. we've got Constitution Hill. Behind that, though, there is, in, in all, all yeah. jesting aside, there is a dearth. But Rubo does look a credible contender to at least fill the positions behind. Possibly. He wouldn't be for me now. He's rated, I think, 150 before Saturday. He did it well. I could see him stepping up and trip in time, but he's going to go, I think, to Campton at Christmas. Um, he might end up in a champion hurdle. The only reason he's 33 to 1 is in case people back him each way and he finishes third in a champion hurdle. Mm. If there was no such thing as each way, he'd be 100 to 1 in my book. So he's a long way to improve, but yeah, he did well. Paul Nichols is actually more excited about Ruba going over fences next season than he is over. I mean, he's going to run in the Christmas hurdle, run in the Kingwell as well. Maybe the champion. Should we correct it? I think you're more excited about him going over Jason. <laughs> Primarily because I was led there because Paul Nichols said he smit you know, after he straight away he went. What chaser he's going yeah. to be next year? I mean, hopefully. Well, Paul's brain thinks that way, doesn't it? Naturally, I mean, most of his horses he talks yeah. about over fences, doesn't he? Um, I'm excited by it. So there we go. Uh, when he goes over fences, less so about what he might do over hurdles this season. Speaking of fences, I thought Napa's Hill was brilliant over fences, and the the improvement from the run behind Unexpected Party at Chepstow mm -hmm. to win Campton. What did you make? Yeah, of that? he jumped super, you know, super fantastic. Um, you'd have to say that Paul Nichols is a genius at getting a horse to jump. Uh, Harry Cobden to watch him on a chaser is just poetry in motion, isn't it? So the two together jump fantastic. He's 20 to 1 <coughs> for the Turners. Um, the fact that Paul won the first three races, QL Go, he won the first with uh, Meatloaf. And although Brave Man's game got bet, he had to say to himself, Come on, Paul, three out of three ain't bad. What do you think? Yeah, let me write that down. <laughs> One day I might use that if I've, <laughs> if I've run out of absolutely everything to say. But um, uh, Napper's Hill, for me, I wouldn't see him as a Turner's horse personally, but um, yeah, he, will he go to the Cato Star at Kempton next, perhaps over three miles? We'll I see. I mean, he, he's, he's obviously going to have decent options over here before the Irish horses, the good Irish horses come over and start dominating. He'll win his share of races, won't he? Yeah, I'd be, I'd be more optimistic than, than Gavin going forward. Obviously, Connections won um, with Stage Star, the Turner's last year, um, 20 to 1 with Bet365. I, I think it's fairly fair for, for Napper's Hill. Um, was obviously beaten by Unexpected Party. Uh, on his reappearance on his on his chasing debut but yeah it took a huge step forward in this race i was really impressed mm. really impressed um he, he didn't the, miss a beat no all the way around no we, we touched on jessica earlier but th there was no concern at any point during that race uh, i think he was the first horse to wear the paul barber silks to victory so paul paul nichols got got a bit emotional afterwards which is rare to see but very rare yeah no i, I was really impressed with the performance okay look forward to seeing wherever napa hill goes in the future i think he is <clears throat> certainly the improvement he showed from Chepstow to Wincanton suggests that there could be a very good season for him over fences. Let's deal with the Dan Royal Champion Chase. <clears throat> Just the four runners, but a brilliant finish. Brilliant finish, yeah. Talk me through your own assessment of Jerry Colomb's win. Uh, very, very good. He's, you know, he's a dour stare. That's what he does. He hasn't really shown, to me anyway, any signs that he has a turn of, a turn of foot. Um, got outdone. You know, on the Brown Advisory last year, basically got himself in trouble more so than the jockey, I thought. Same at Sandown, hit a flat spot. I was very surprised that Jack coming, uh, turning into the straight was on the outside of Conflated, considering he's ridden Conflated many times and the Conflated was going to go left. He put himself into a corner, literally, at the second last. Uh, he was all dressed up with nowhere to go. That's another meatloaf reference, just to tell you. And then when he switched out, had to switch again outside NVLN, uh, yeah, I love the horse in terms of his attitude. He wants to win. <clears throat> he could be unbeaten uh, already in his career, except for the, the Brown Advisory. Mm. Is he going to be a Gold Cup horse? I know it's an extra couple of furlongs up that hill, but to me, I just wonder. Uh, I think he definitely would, to help his case, he definitely would want soft, heavy ground on the day to, to make it more of a test of stamina. Like, he wouldn't beat Galloping de Champ and a John Durkin. John... Um, Gallop in the Champ could be placed in a, in a Queen World of Champion chase, I think. He could win the Ryanair. He's won the Gold Cup. He definitely is a lot more tall. So I just think uh, I wouldn't be backing him at 5-1 to one for the Gold Cup. OK. But would it be fair to say that the Gold Cup would be the race that would probably suit Jerry Colomb more than any other race in the calendar that he will be probably lining up in? Because the extra stamina that's required to see out mm -hmm. the Gold Cup 
would suit him more than most horses. Definitely. I think it's worth looking at who he was running against. He, he lost a little bit of time on each of his fences, but it was his first run in open company. You've got to look against who he was against. A, a Gold Cup winner in Manila Indo. Uh, conflated who's won an Irish Gold Cup. Like It, it was a really mm. good race against good seasoned jumpers. Well, and Dwight um, Allen ran a great race as well. Definitely. Um, yeah, interesting stat afterwards. Jack Kennedy's won a, group, a grade one chase on all four of the horses <laughs> in the race now, which I thought was quite nice. Um, but yeah, obviously looking back at his career, he, he got outpaced in the City Isles and came home well after uh, over two and a half miles. Like he just seems to hit that flat spot and just keep going. I mm. uh, thought Jack Kennedy gave him a great ride. Um, well, after switching inside. Um, but yeah, apparently Manila Rindo may head the cross-country route, depending on how the season goes. And apparently conflated. It's becoming fashionable for it's, ex-grade yeah. one chasers. Well, isn't it? It's really bubbling up. Galvin, uh, Delta work. It's almost like a veteran's chase at this stage. <laughs> And we do need to have a look at like, a cross country. I think the fact that it's a conditions race at the festival. We'll get onto obviously our preview of the of the yeah. handicap later on. But yeah, the fact that you can just chuck in Delta Work on his first start over the banks to win it, and then Galvin nearly did it last year. Yeah. It's yeah. I think we do need to have a look at that. Okay. So out of the four horses, Jerry Colum, you're not entirely sold for at fives for the Gold Cup. Mm. Um, anything else from the placed horses that you can see maybe? targets further down the line? Uh, you'd you have wanna... to say if Conflata goes for the cross country, he'll take a lot of beating in that. Okay. He has to go against his two stable companions that run this week, Delta Work and Galvin, as we said, and Manella Indo, but Conflata would have more toe, I'd imagine, than those. He's better going left-handed, which the cross country mostly is, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> over those two or three circuits. So I'd imagine Conflata would have a great chance in that. And even when he goes back to Leopardstown at Christmas, he could run a cracker. But the fact that he's 10, Envoy Allen is 9. He almost made a five uh, down royal meetings in a row to, to win this year. Um, so yeah, maybe come play at Christmas, but you know he's going against Jerry Kalam, who'd be fitter having had a run. So, anything for you from the other? I, I thought Jerry Kalam was the one to take out of it. I, I was impressed. I, I was more impressed than Gavin uh, ar around it. Um, I thought five to one with better three six five was, was perfectly fair for the Gold Cup. Okay, uh, obviously in the Chiefly Park colours and behind Jerry Kalam was Envoy Allen in the Chiefly Park colours earlier in the week. Alaho made a welcome return to action. Did we learn much about Alaho's ability? We just or did we just realise that Alaho's back in training and he still remains a formidable force? It was good to see him back. I thought it was an OK performance. I didn't think it was any better than that. I thought he was a bit sticky at his jumping, but he's probably entitled to that. I don't think Woody is, is known as, as doing a lot of schooling at home. Um, got a bit tired late on, but capitalised the fact that there was only two other runners in the race. Um, I thought it was OK. Um, Bet365 having 3-1 to one for the Ryanair and 5-1 to one for the King George. I can't see him heading for the King George, but he'll probably be the one to beat come March in the Ryanair. Were he to head for the King George, he'd be quite exciting, wouldn't he? Yeah, I doubt he will. Uh, it'd be a tough ask um, going against Brave Man's game. Perhaps if, if he starts to you know, show at home that he's back to his best, perhaps will he be tempted? But I imagine he'll go for the horse and jockey chase in Thurlis in the middle of January and then on to Cheltenham. It's two months then between um, Clonmel, Thurlis and on to Cheltenham. His performance the other day at the time wasn't great. It was slower than the mayor's chase, Allegory de Bassi. Mm. So that form wouldn't be fantastic. But still, I'd say if you owned him, you'd be thrilled that he came back after 18 months off. Uh, he'll build on that. He'll get better. That performance wouldn't win the Ryanair, but I could see him progressing. progressing yeah. And I think 3-1 to one is, is very fair. I've already backed him. I think he'll take a lot of beating having won two of them. OK. Um, there are a few other performances in Ireland that we can just... Uh, reflect on. I mean, you mentioned Allegory de Vassi. There was Irish Point, who I thought was pretty good beating Magical Zoe. Again, uh, one or two flights of hurdles omitted from, from the, that race. Mm -hmm. uh, Dino Blue beat Phil Dorr. Sir Gerhard came down. I'm not sure how we're going to play the Sir Gerhard card in that race. Do you think he was going to play a part in that? It was two out. He was travelling well. Paul was very happy. He said afterwards that his jumping was good up to that point, but then Sir Gerhard does throw in the odd howler and he smacked the fence halfway up and paid the price. So it's such a pity because he looked a wonderful horse a couple of years ago. So it's just things aren't working out for him. Will they send him back over hurdles? And if they do, will they be tempted by mm. a stairs hurdle? I'm not sure. We'll see. But uh, Dino Blue was good uh, to beat. You know, you, you think that field door trained by Gordon Elliott was fit. Mm. Uh, so to beat uh, him getting the seven pounds was a good run. Her jumping is brilliant. This time last year, she was quite keen in her races when she ran against Impervious at Cork, for example. But she's starting to settle down a lot better now. Uh, I have no issue whatsoever with, with the trip. She's only ran over two miles over fences so far. But if you look back at her run uh, 18 months ago uh, behind Brandy Love at Ferry House over two and a half, all she did that day was stay through the line. So I think she will take a lot of beating in the mare's chase. OK. Um, we'll, we'll do some more work with you on the mm -hmm. novices. But I'll just pick up on a few uh, in Britain. 
stay away Faye, I thought, was, was very good. I thought he may have just got Harry Cobden out of a bit of a hole in the way the race was run. Yeah, he made a really, really, I mean, the jump at the last was, was what won it for him. Stayed on well at the finish. Paul Nichols was, was quick after the race to quash any thoughts of the National Hunt chase. No, we'll go for the Brown advisory, but I wouldn't be so sure near at the time once the Irish novices come out. Mm. Um, so, yeah, I'd, I'd hold your antipose slips. I think Bed 5 having 10 to 1 for the Brown advisory, but I'd, I'd hold that until the time. Uh, I thought Alexia Donuts was, was good in the Howden Gold Cup. I thought Freddie Ginger gave him a brilliant ride. Yeah. Um, I had a fantastic weekend. Um, yeah, a real jockey going places. Um, and then I'm interested, Gavin. So, so you'd have Dino Blue over Allegory Devassi in the, in the Mayor's Chase? I think the two of them are a standout. Dino Blue is an official rating of 155. Allegory Devassi is 151. So Dino Blue has achieved more. Uh, she won the two handicaps at Fairy House and also at Punchestown having fluffed her lines in the Grand Annual. Uh, her jumping is immaculate. It's got really good. She's gone straight. She's very accurate. Whereas Allegory Devassi, you see her in Clonmel, she's jumping to her right. She made a mistake early on. But even the worry going into Cheltenham last year on her only start going left-handed over fences was would she jump to her right in the mirror's chase? Now, she did over the first three fences and then she was straight. Mm. I think the two of them set a very high standard. Now, obviously, there's no mirror's novice chase this year as there hasn't been. Uh, so for a horse to get to their level as a first season novice, like say a Brandy Love that disappointed the other day, they're going to have to achieve an awful lot. Now Impervious was able to do it last year, but I think the two of them are um, a good bit ahead at the moment. Uh, as somebody said to me, they're not shooting eight under par, they're shooting like four under, they're, they're setting a good standard. And for me, I prefer Dino Blue just because we're jumping. Okay. Um, can I throw one other British performance? Uh, we always pay attention when Nicky Henderson unleashes a smart novice hurdler at Newbury mm -hmm. and will mount. I know he didn't beat a great deal and was a very short price to do so, but he was pretty impressive. And the vibe from the Henderson camp is that very useful. Yeah, and it, it's not as if we hadn't seen him before. He obviously won a, won a couple of bumpers for, for Neil Moore Holland. Um, He's 12 to 1 for the Supreme with Bet365 and 14 to 1 for the Ballymore. I'd be more inclined to back him for the intermediate. Um, distance, I thought he's, he looks a strong stayer. Um, yeah, it's hard not to be impressed with him, but yeah, good performance from Wilmer. What did you think? I thought he was excellent. Uh, the overall time wasn't great. I went and done an analysis of uh, the times in the race uh, compared with the, the handicap and also with the, the novice hurdle um, won by Manimal. And overall, not fantastic. From the line round to the line was fine, but from four out to the line, he was. Wicked. He was very sharp. Wicked. Is yeah. that a meat loaf reference? <laughs> no. Yeah. Um, a random one. I didn't take the words out of your mouth, no. <laughs> <laughs> but um, he was very, very quick. Now, he's won two bumpers, um, which race he'll end up going for, but he's definitely a very good horse. Yes, he's very exciting. Yeah. Um, I'm going to open the floor mm -hmm. for you to expand on your uh, research work. Uh, novices that have struck a chord with you? Just, I think, over the last week, there's been a huge amount of novices. So if you get a chance, if you haven't seen these run, I think they're worth looking up. So I'm going to give you nine novice hurdlers and nine novice chasers. Okay, let me, I'm going to get my pen and paper ready. Jeez. Well, I'll give you, you can take a picture of this later I, don't, I, I prefer to write it all down, <laughs> so I can just then put... Just don't do this too long. We, we learnt with Rishi last week. Can't spell. No. Okay. And they only Easy. have to be eight, char eight characters. So, yeah, actually, if you do send me a text. Yeah. I'll send you a WhatsApp. <laughs> okay. Just, so, just for now, though, novice hurdlers, should we start and, with those? Yeah, and because I'm Irish, one of them hasn't jumped a hurdle yet. But, well, obviously. I mean, you know, so we just do things a bit funny. Taking as given. Uh, so the first one was on Tubber. was very impressive last Tuesday okay. in, in Fairy House for Henry. Will Mount, you've mentioned. The next one is Brighter Days Ahead, who's now 5-1, to 6-1 to one favourite for the Mayor's Novice Hurdle. I thought very good last week. Yeah, excellent. Um, the worry with her going right-handed was that thoroughly she jumped out to her left, whereas the other day in down right she didn't. Her jumping needs to sharpen up a little bit, but she's only four, she's well-related. She's won two bumpers, now she's won a graded novice hurdle. She's entitled to be favoured. Her time was very quick. Her time was actually quicker than Irish Point. Okay. Which is interesting. Uh, Firefox who won the bumper on Friday. He's going straight to novice hurdle and he looks quite good. Uh, down memory lane looked to have more gears than you, Richie, in your Ferrari uh, on Saturday in Down Royal. Um, it was a weak race, the time wasn't good, but he just looked like he had plenty of toe. Okay. Uh, two horses from Goran Park on Saturday, Beckett Rock and Il Atlantique. Il Atlantique, as Willie's, ran in some good bumpers last year, was very impressive uh, out in front. Would remind you a small bit of Energamine, same colours obviously, uh, but will make a lovely chaser. But Beckett Rock, please put that one into your tracker. Uh, it's there. This, no, this, this is my this, tracker. This was, this was a very, very nice performance. Okay, well, uh, it was a couple of seconds quicker than Il Atlantique on bad ground. Uh, if he shows up in the Royal Bond, he'd have a squeak amongst 
down memory lane and little mm -hmm. Atlantique, etc. Slade Steel was good on Sunday in Nace and also south of the border for Nicky in Sandown on Sunday was very good. And then Novice Chasers. Oh, wait, Chasers. Shorthand. <laughs> yeah. Novice, Novice Chasers. Chasers. Oroco last Tuesday in Warwick was excellent. Very His good. jumping was yeah. fantastic. I think we all agree that he has to be up in the high rankings. Now, they're, they're debating which, is he going two miles, three miles, two and a half, but you'd imagine the Turners would suit him at the moment. Yes. Um, so he looks exciting. Imagine was good in Ferrius on Tuesday. Beat a horse call. I know the way you're thinking who flashed home. Stay away, Faye, on Friday and Exeter. We mentioned uh, that horse. I wasn't blown away. Uh, I think if the horse gets beat in the meantime, the National Hunt Chase would definitely suit much better than the Brown Advisory. Found a 50 was excellent in Down Royal. Uh, jumped really well. Harmonia Maker was good in Gorham Park on Saturday. Um, Napper's Hill, we mentioned, win Canton jump fantastic. Giovinco, we didn't mention. Wins an entry off 143. Um, the fence is out as usual. Uh, but overall, his jumping was, was quite good. He unseated in Carlisle, as we know. Um, he's an exciting chaser. Uh, wasn't blown away, but it was still a very good performance. Mm. He's giving weight away, I suppose, and without yeah. the fences, it's harder work, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, two more is Grange Clare West. Um, yeah, what did you make of that? Now, I was, I was quite impressed with Grange Clare West, mm -hmm. but it's not the first time that he's produced an impressive performance. Yeah. He, um, he was very exciting this time last year, in November, when he won a maiden hurdle in Navan. Then he disappointed twice, and then he wins a punch down. So it'll be interesting to see where he goes next. I'm not sure if he'll go for the Drinmore or not. Uh, will he wait for, for Christmas? Uh, but he was good. Um, the horse and third belonging to Emmett Mullins was slightly disappointing, I'd say. The, the favourite in the rest. Corbett's Cross. Corbett's Cross. Yeah. Uh, but Grange Clare West jumping. Most of the novices that I'm pointing out here, their jumping has been fantastic over the last week, which is good. And then the last one to mention of the nine chasers is Ile Francais uh, from Otay on Sunday. Um, Who's coming over for the, the quarter, quarter start. start. Yeah. Yes. And uh, J'aime le cheval. That's all I'd say. I like the horse. Very good. Okay. Uh, he's two from two over fences, was five out of six over hurdles. At the time he got beat, he ran behind Thelem, who was also very good at the weekend. Um, but Ile Francais was excellent. His jumping is brilliant. He ran in those races where there's hurdles and bigger fences and mm -hmm. all different shapes of, of fences, but he was excellent. So if he comes to Kempton, I think he's English owned, perhaps, or they were sharing him. So he would be exciting in Kempton. He'd add a lot to the day, I think. Absolutely. I used to love it when they used to get horses that had created a big performance in France come over. Um, not many people knew about them, and it would add a little extra dimension. There was um, one other horse to mention in, in Otai called Jigme. Uh, I, he's a fantastic uh, three-year-old. It doesn't look like he's going to uh, the Triumph Hurdle, just to say he's in the betting. He's 14 to 1, kind of second okay. or third favourite. Uh, he's going to Stud, I believe. Fantastic name for a sire, Jigme, but there you go. <laughs> um, on that sub, no. Um, <laughs> Steve, anything that you would like to add to this comprehensive list of novice hurdlers and novice chasers? Just one more that I'm sure that you will enjoy was, was Queen's Gamble winning on her reappearance yes, yesterday. Come on, Queen's Gamble. That yeah. was very good. She was very good. Um, by all accounts, I w I'm chatting away to people at Kempton yesterday. All accounts, she would have been fit enough to run yesterday, but she would have, she'd come on significantly for that. Um, and it was nice to see him make a bit of a mistake at the first flight of hurdles. Not quite so good, at, not or quite so bad at the second, but then progressively better as the race. And when she needed a couple of big jumps yeah. in the straight, she, she delivered. Um, she's very, she looked really well in the public. Yeah. I mean, she's getting better. Um, hopefully, the mayor's novices at the festival will be in her sights. 14, she, 14, 14 to 1. Yeah. Wouldn't yeah. be for me now. What, what a surprise. Yeah. No? No. Not Queen's Gamble? No. I, I'm just a softy, so in fairness, what she could run, she could have got beaten a country mile yesterday, I'd still be supporting her. Okay, are we closing off on anything? That's it. Last chance. Going Go, once, going twice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's been a it's been a brilliant week. It's been a brilliant, you know, when you see Down Royal starting, yeah. uh, you know the season is fully underway and uh, some excellent performances over the last week. Yeah, yeah, it has been excellent, uh, and that has been a joy uh, to look back on all that excellent racing. And hopefully, you've got that list of novice hurdlers and novice chasers plus one or two others that Steve and I are throwing into the equation, like a Queen's Gamble as well. But that has been this week's racing recap. <laughs> Right, before we get into our November meeting preview at Cheltenham, just to let you know that our sponsor, Bet365, have an ITV racing price promise. They will not be beaten on price on any horse for all UK and Irish races shown live 
on ITV Racing. Full T's and C's can be found on the website. Now time to look ahead to what's coming up at Cheltenham. As always, whenever Cheltenham's around the corner, it adds a little extra buzz to the whole proceedings. Um, on Friday, there are a number of, at the moment, seemingly quite interesting opportunities. We'll look at the uh, handicap chase, which is due off at, I think, 1.45 uh, on Friday. Two miles the distance. Calico, who obviously bumped into John Bond a few times, um, actually gave John Bond a bit of a scare at Warwick. Um, he's uh, the market leader at the moment. How do you see this race, Steve? I, I gave Triple Trade um, a good chance in this. I, I thought he had a lovely profile. Won his final start, uh, two starts last season over fences as a novice and then finished second over this course and distance on his reappearance at the October meeting. He was only a couple of lengths behind dancing on my own um, at the finish that day. Uh, looked a little bit outpaced over the two miles on good ground that day. Um, there is some rain forecast for Cheltenham this week, so mm. I think the slightly slower ground would probably suit him. Um, he was only a pound higher now in this race. Um, yeah, and should be suited with that. He's currently 6-1 to one with Bet365 for Joe Tizard and, and Brendan Powell. They've unleashed some nice horses already this year. So, um, yeah, yeah I, I thought I'd give Triple Trade a chance. Well, it was good to see Joe Tizard's horses running better than they did last season. Um, Gav, how do you see that? This is almost like in Countdown when the fella says he got the, uh, the lady got the number right. And they got the, you know, the numbers. <laughs> I actually have it here. You need to hold it up. It's 100 multiplied by 7. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, triple trade maybe. I uh, didn't like the fact that it got, got outpaced the last day over two miles on good ground. Uh, Steve said uh, there's, there's supposedly 10 mils of rain between now and maybe on Friday or Saturday. So if the ground is soft, it's a pity that, you know, the horse definitely stays further than two miles. But on soft ground, triple trade would have a chance. Good run the last day. You're saying about Calico against John Bon that day in Warwick. I think John Bon nearly beat himself, never mind Calico <laughs> beating him. So um, he came back then to win a short head at, at Doncaster Calico before um, coming down at, at entry. So small bet maybe on triple trade each way, six to one. Okay, uh, triple trade, small bet each way. Uh, the, on Friday as well, there's the grade two novice uh, chase, the Arkle trial. Um, JPR won. Now, he was entered to run on the weekend, he, last weekend, sorry. He missed out there. But again, another one for the Tizards, possibly. Yeah, he's got a couple of entries. He's also entered on Sunday in the two and a half mile novice handicap chase. Uh, this race basically revolves around uh, unexpected party. He's expected to go for the Gold Cup on Saturday rather than this race. Um, so there's been a bit of a market move uh, before recording this morning. Um, Dan Skelton also has a couple of other entries. So he, he's going to be key to this race. But I love JPR One's debut. Um, I suppose the a spike negative is that he's kind of shown his best form fresh mm. in his career so far. Um, but I just think he's growing up. He, he's he's not that old. Um, he's only ran twice at Cheltenham in his career. The first was when only a neck behind the 148 rated. Um, that's all right, Gino, um, which was only on his second ever career start. So, uh, and then the second was when he was. 150 to 1 behind sure. Constitution Hill and the Supreme. So you can kind of ignore that. Um, he was sent off outside of the three of the novice handicap chase um, at Newton Abbott on the 21st of October. Um, I loved the form of that. He beat ICO, who had won by 12 lengths on his chase in debut, and Monviel, um, who must be one of the only Harry Derham horses who didn't win on his stable debut. Um, that yard just has a ridiculous record at the minute with stable debutants. So that's form that I would rate highly. Um, that win came off a mark of 130. The handicap was only raised in four pounds, so I did think he'd probably take in a novice's handicap chase rather than a graded race, but this isn't the strongest race in the world. Um, Brendan Powell's jocked up. Um, he is also jocked up on Sunday as well, but yeah, he's around five to two, and uh, I thought that was fair. Yeah, I thought it looked a good opportunity, uh, assuming we know the makeup of the field. I mean, Steve's already mentioned that unexpected party is likely to run mm. according to connections. He seems... Uh, focused on running in the in the Gold Cup on Saturday. Um, Mighty Tom, also near the top of the market? Yeah, has a good chance. Uh, ran a cracker in Cork behind, let's be clear about it. That was two and a half miles. Came there, travelled well, um, jumped slightly to its left, so going left handed will suit. Travelled well out the back, came to challenge two out, and then let's be clear about it, powered away. I think the step down to two miles will really suit. Not 100% sure if the horse is going to go there on Friday. Hopefully it does. Uh, just to tie in the form. I would have been against unexpected party back down to two miles, giving away the weight. JPR one was excellent the last day, very good time, uh, up to 134. So you'd imagine 134 shouldn't be good enough to win a grade two, but, uh, and maybe they'll go here, as he said, instead of the handicap on the Sunday. Um, I would have thought Mighty Tom would have a massive chance. One to mention down the bottom there, Endless Escape, a lovely mare, plenty wins last year, ran in the mare's novice hurdle, maybe first time over fences, she's a big price, but um, 
Yeah, maybe Mighty Tom if he runs. Okay. Uh, what about the cross country chase on Friday? We've already spoken uh, in short dispatches about that race so far. Uh, Delta Work and Galvin are both entered. It appears, obviously, if they run, that I think around half the field will be out of the handicap, um, should that be the case, which obviously uh, leads us to thinking we can rule a few out. Back on the lashes in there, he won the race a couple of years ago. Um, how, would you, how would you see this, assuming that one of, or maybe both of Delta Work and Yeah, Galvin I'd are? imagine both of them will run. Um, for me, uh, the ground of any race the weekend will have the biggest bearing in this result. Gavin lo Galvin loves a uh, decent ground. Delta Work prefers soft ground. It looks like it's going to be soft for me, Delta Work. Uh, beat Galvin in the cross country um, in March by, I think, two and a half lengths and actually gets a pound this time mm -hmm. instead of level weights. And uh, if the ground is soft, I think Delta Work would be hard beat. All right. What about your assessment? Um, as this is a handicap rather than a conditions race, like at the festival, I'd probably chance a couple of the kind of experienced cross country um, horses back on the lash is, is six to one with Bet365. Like you said, won, won it a couple of years ago. Um, he's had a reappearance run. Um, that will put him spot on for this. His handicap mark is fine. Um, he was, uh, Sean Bowen was schooling him. There was a, a video on Twitter, so he schooled well the other day. Uh, and then the others, Diesel Dallier, again, he won this race in 2019. Um, third behind back on the lash in 2021. He ran in a novice hurdle at Worcester. The other day we finished well beaten, but that was obviously a pipe open to put him spot on for this. So if they're ever going to beat the likes of Delta Work and Galvin in the cross country chase this year, it will be either here or at the December meeting. So yeah, trying to catch both of the Gordon Elliott horses kind of um, a bit below par in a handicap, I'd probably chance back on the lash at six to one and Diesel Dally at ten to one. All right, fair enough. Um, Steve mentioned it earlier on about the future of the cross country, particularly at the festival. Would it be a much more interesting race? Were it a handicap? Yes, it would. Uh, the only thing is that if you have horses rated so highly, like the R160, I think, uh, say Galvin is, a lot of the horse is going to be out of the handicap. So unless you made it more than two stone from top to bottom, maybe to make it even more interesting. But uh, you will have that issue. But certainly it'd be more interesting because um, if Gordon targets three at it, yeah. uh, he just wants to have a banker for the week. And uh, he'll be fives on to win it, I'd say, next March, the way it's going. Yeah. You're, uh, you think it should be a handicap? Or have a... I know it's been it's been murky waters if you have a, a rating ceiling, I suppose, yeah. um, to try and not to have them out of the handicap because then you'd end up Delta Work just running around out the back in order to get his handicap mark low enough to get in the race. But I do think something needs to be done about it because it is becoming a bit of a joke come well, March. You're not saying that horses just run to get their handicap marks lowered intentionally? Absolutely not. On no. That'd be like you playing bad golf just to get a bigger handicap. <laughs> That's not intentional. <laughs> that is genuine. But last year, the cross country was a brilliant finish, in fairness, yeah. and it's nice to have two X-grade one horses in it. Yes, so absolutely. So I, I wouldn't yeah. necessarily be in favour of, say, having a ceiling of 150 or whatever, because then you're just bringing lesser horses to the Olympics of racing. But um, maybe a handicap could be a good idea, yeah. All right. Um, also on Friday, the Hyde Novices Hurdle, um, Captain Teague who won at Chepstow on his return, obviously a very smart bumper horse. He is potentially going to line up here. Um, if he does, obviously he's got to carry a penalty, Steve, but um, how tough do you think the potential opposition is? Uh, there's some nice horses in it. I'd be disappointed if he's not winning, though. Um, Paul Nichols won this race last year with, with Hermes Alain. Um, Captain Teague is, is a worthy favourite. He's around even money with Bet365 at the time of recording. Um, impressive eight-length winner of a point-to-point won a Plumpton bumper easily and then went off 40-1 to one for the champion bumper out around those odds, finished mm. third. Um, and then I was really impressed with him in the Persian War. Um, not everyone was. Um, I thought he was learning on the job. Yeah. St st still, obviously, a little bit clueless. Um, especially kind of after the last, Harry Cobden had to keep him up to his work. He's still a big, raw baby. But, yeah, to win the Persian War and your first hurdling start, I, I thought was impressive. Um, like you said, he's got a penalty for that, but he's definitely the one to beat for me. Irrespective of the race that he may have, how excited are you about Captain Teague? Paul Nichols obviously is very excited by it. Yeah, I think he he should win this, and then he'll go on and run the shallow hurdle against Johnny Hu and horse like that. Uh, he might win that too, but he'd have to show more for me to to go and win a Ballymore. The Ballymore yeah. this year looks like it's going to be a very hot renewal. Uh, he'd want to bolt up here, and he'd want to bolt up again um, at Newbury, but. Yeah, he's a lovely horse. He was third in the bumper. He was very good at Chepstow in the grade two. So you'd love to own him. But, um, you know, 
he'd probably end up more in a Ballymore, say, than uh, the Bartlett. Hopefully, Paul doesn't skip Cheltenham and go to Aintree or whatever, <laughs> which he can do. But uh, lovely horse, but he'd have to be very impressive for the weekend. OK. Uh, that's a brief look at what's coming up on Friday at Cheltenham. <clears throat> of course, on Saturday, uh, the big race is indeed the Gold Cup. Stage star, 4-1 to one favourite with Bet365, not long till May. See behind stage star in the Turner, 6-1, to one, the real whacker. Winner of the Brown Advisory, 6-1, to one, unexpected party, 7s, fugitive 8s, Il Rodoto 8s and 12s, bar those. Um, Steve, I'll let you kick off here. Uh, a whole host of horses, obviously, you could make a case for, as is the case every year with the race, but where are you leaning at the moment? I thought fugitive was kind of the solid option of the race. He's finished second on all of his three starts at Cheltenham, with all those runs coming last season. One at the old course and two at the new course, so it doesn't really matter where he runs. Finished second behind Il Rodoto by a length in January of a mark of 143, and then finished second by a couple of lengths in the plate behind Seddon of a mark of 149. I just think that's rock solid for me. Yeah. He disappointed at Aintree in, in the Melon Chase afterwards, but if you look back at his Aintree form, he's ran there four times, been beaten 26 lengths, 67 lengths, 28 lengths, and 32 lengths. So I just think he doesn't like the doesn't like the track. Cheltenham it, it suits him well. Um, the Richard Hobson stable could be in better form. Mm -hmm. That would be the slight negative, um, but around 8-1 to one with Bet365, I thought it was a solid each-way option. OK, so Fugitive, 8-1 to one with Bet365, the selection uh, for Steve. Gavin, how do you see it? Uh, poor Fugitive, he's so consistent that he just keeps going up in the ratings, which it's is... another case of uh, countdown. Countdown, yeah. <laughs> You're not also going to copy his work? No, I'm not. Uh, I thought, you know, the, the race revolves around... I'd love to... Can't wait to see the real whacker. Um, yeah. I'm not saying he's going to win because the long-term objective is the Gold Cup, possibly. Uh, fantastic jumper. He's three from three at the track. His running style, I think, will be exciting to watch in a race yeah. like this, carrying top weight. Absolutely, yeah. He's a brilliant jumper. Um, and stage star is two from two at the track over fences. So are they going to take each other on as one consideration in the pace angle? Um, I'm not sure the real whacker, you know, this is not his derby or his uh, Gold Cup. So um, I thought perhaps... Um, not long till May had a neat way chance uh, had won three race over fences and then finished second uh, to a stage star in the Turners is only a couple of pounds better off but it has had a recent run mm. I finished behind Dancing on My Own uh, over two miles this triple suit much better it's uh, six to one and seven to one in places each way shout stage star difficult to beat but not long till May for me alright can I throw a couple of at you ask you your thoughts on Angel's Breath the reason I asked about that is because Sam Thomas has done an incredible job with horses off long layoffs. Mm -hmm. This horse actually didn't run too badly over hurdles at Cheltenham last month. Um, back over fence, if you look at his chase, early chasing form, he slammed first flow. And it, okay, he may not be the horse that he once was, but even where he is in the handicap, he might be a player. 12, looking for something outside of the obvious mm -hmm. ones at around 12 to 1. Any, any encouragement? He'll probably travel well into the race. Um, it's just his finishing effort uh, since he's come back has, has been slightly questionable. But yeah, no, he's he he got a chance. You'd have to say Sam Thomas is making a fantastic fist of training horse anyway, that's mm. for sure. Okay, and that's it. Nothing else. Il Rodoto, Freddie Gingell, um, taking some handy weight off his back, fourth in the race last year. Just throwing it out there. I mean, I'm getting no joy out of these two. <laughs> <coughs> so not long till May and Fugitive for those two. I'll probably play Angel's Breath and Il Rodoto just for spite. Uh, OK, uh, let's talk about Sunday, shall we? And the Schler. Um, <coughs> Nube Negro obviously has a great record in the race. When things are going his way, he's a very, very smart horse in his Yeah, but he's great. Spanish though, isn't he? Can you trust the Spanish, can you? Oh, With their tans and their weather? To, and yeah, and, uh, very you know what attractive. I mean? Yeah, to have a nice oh. tan, I will say. Um, he does like a little bit of sunshine, mm. and he would prefer better ground. Yeah. So if the ground was on the soft side, it would be a bit a bit of an issue. Um, but it's possible that we might see John Bond and Edwardstone there as well. So how do you see it? This is a really good race. Um, yeah, I was impressed with, <laughs> with, with the entries. Um, we moan about a lack of depth of the English two-mile hurdlers behind Constitution Hill, but the opposition to El Faviota actually isn't too bad mm. this side of the pond. Um, John Bond will be expected to win. If, I don't know what the odds are currently. Um, around four to nine, I think. Four to nine with yeah. three six five at the moment. But yeah, Edward Stone has question marks. He, he obviously looked a leading champion chase contender last year, but kind of defeats in the in the rearranged Clarence House behind Edward yeah. Chigi, and he, his effort in the champion chase really does raise question marks for for his season. Um, the race was a bit of a non-event last year. I think Nuve Negra won at tens on. Yeah. Um, I think Bambridge is is going to be the biggest danger to John Bond if he comes over for this. 
we've had a bit of discussions around the, the ground. Um, so he wouldn't want too much rain. He, he wants better, better ground. But he's yet to finish out the first three of the fences. Has that course and distance success at the meeting last year, as well as in the Martin Pipe. Looked outpaced yeah. over this trip at the Dublin Racing Festival behind El Fabiolo. So connections up him to two and a half miles at Aintree. Beat Samoir and, and Stage Star in that, so it's strong form. Um, may well get outpaced again over the two-mile trip here, but we know that Cheltenham suits. A record of two from two shows that um, he could exploit any weakness that John Bond has on his reappearance. All right. What do you think? I'm not sure. John, Banbridge will run just because the, the ground, he's very, very particular. Uh, has to have decent ground, so I, I'm not sure he'll come. Uh, Nube Negra, never loved the horse, never will. Um, just question his attitude. Wow. Uh, Edward Stone was brilliant in last year's Tingle Creek, first time back. So people have to remember that. If you're going to back John Bon at 4 to 9, you just don't want Edward Stone on a going day, do you know? Mm. Uh, obviously, his season fell apart later on in the year, but just horses after a six month break, they can come back fresh. And if he puts in the performance that he put in in the Tingle Creek, he'd take a lot of beating. You'd imagine John Bon will win, but I just, it all depends on which Edward Stone shows up for me. All right. Well, actually, I know this might sound ridiculous, but given the fact that the likeliest horse to lead in the race is Editor de Gilles. Were he to be allowed to run, the fact he's had a run this season, um, which was a quiet run, by yeah. all, you know, anyone watching the race would know that it looked like it was a run to bring him forward for something else. I thought maybe he might get out in front and just catch one or two of them on the back foot a bit, like Edward Stone, like John Bond. So <clears throat> I might chuck a few quid at him. Uh, why are you looking so... No, 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 just you could back him each way two places. That's all I was going to say to you. But you can back him. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Well, yeah. yeah, two places. I yeah. want to win. Okay. I want to win. Uh, the Great Wood on Sunday. Uh, only a matter of time. Four to one favourite with Bet365. Nemean Lion, 11 to two. Uh, Nickerbocker Glory, eight to one. This is, again, really good race. If the majority of these line up, Lucia, eights. Iberico Lord, tens. Lerda Sud is also tens. Jin Coco, elevens. Blue King Daru, who won at Cheltenham last month, twelves. Um, some bigger prices, the likes of Sonagino and Two Friendly, Affidil, 20s. Away you go, Steve. Call it. Well, the Greatwood Hurdle is normally a, a race that I like the form figures for for the rest of the season. It, if I end up looking at the County Hurdle for the Cheltenham Festival, the first race that I come back to is the Greatwood. So it's well worth getting your notebooks out for it. Um, the presence of only a matter of time in this race makes it a no betting race for me because I never know what to expect with these Paul Burn horses until about 10 seconds before the off. Like, he's currently 4-1 to one with Bet365. He could go off 7-4, to four, he could go off 20-1. to one. Yeah. Like, he, his profile for the race is, is, is a bit mad, really. So he was beaten at long odds for his first two hurdle starts. One of those was behind Marie Nationale and then was awarded a punch down bumper in the stewards' room. So he was 25-1 to one that day, wasn't particularly fancied and ended up getting awarded it for interference from a Willie Mullins, um, a Willie Mullins horse then. He, he then finished third at Roscommon, which form isn't good enough, and then was running OK on handicap debut at Cork, ended up running out when staying on. Um, I mean, it's a bit of a mad profile to be the Great Wood Hurdle favourite, but <laughs> sorry, no, I'm adding. But yeah, a trainer upgrade to, to Willie Mullins on your final start is definitely a trainer upgrade. Um, the handicap has not really taken any any chances is is added ten pounds onto the the Irish mark, so we sort of a mark of one hundred and fifteen here uh, in the UK. But pff, I don't know. I couldn't be backing him at four to one, but it also wouldn't be the biggest surprise if he actually went on to win. Well, or if he went off much shorter. Yeah, uh, seven to four or twenty to one. Who knows where the horse is going to go? What are, What are your thoughts? I was actually chatting to Paul yesterday. I'm a good good friends with Paul, and yeah, he gives it an each way chance. He wasn't jumping up and down, but he thinks it has a reasonable chance. Okay. Um, I'd say. Does that help at all, Steve? No, did you ask him about Slate Lane in the fixed brush? Well, the old fixed brush in a couple I of weeks' didn't. time. Because, yeah, I, I noticed on, on Odds Checker, on the brilliant grid at Odds Checker, there was um, yeah, a lot of blue for, for only a matter of time in this and Slate Lane in the old fixed brush hurdle. So I thought. Yeah, he'd have to have a chance if he shows up there, yeah. yeah. Um, he's quite keen, that horse, so he'd want to settle a little bit better, but yeah. Um, yeah, uh, this horse, uh, what's interesting in this race is there's 18 entries, there's only two horses carrying less than 11 mm. stone, and uh, only a matter of time is due to carry 10 stone three. So it's getting basically a stone off every horse or yeah. more in the race. Um, the form of the bumper in Punchtown is okay. The horse that it got the race from in the stewards' room won bumper in Galway, and behind that horse, six of the horses have won since. So I'd say the form is decent. The run out the last day, obviously it's going to go the other way around left-handed. I presume whoever's riding will be burying the horse down the inside. Um, you never like to see a horse running out, but I'm told they'd, they'd never 
suspected anything of this horse before, so perhaps that's just a once-off. Uh, the fact that it's only carrying 10 stone 3 has to be a massive uh, help to it. Knickerbocker Glory was excellent the last day in, yeah. in, in Ascot, um, but there's lots in here, like Nameen Line was, he's, he's doing the rounds, he was very impressive in Scotland, very impressed in Wales, and now he's going to try and do the, the hat-trick in the Greatwood, um, carrying Brass top line. weight. Yeah. yeah. Uh, only up to 140, I think, from 135. Uh, Blue King Darrow won a chat on the last day. You also had uh, Look Away win a novice hurdle. So it's it's quite a deep race. I wouldn't be into Lucia. I just think her jumping needs to improve a lot. And Agreed. she needs, I'd say she needs rattling quick ground to show her pace. But um, token se selection will be only a matter of time each way at 4 to 1. The price is not great. I grant you that. I don't think it'll be going off 7 to 4 on you. Okay. So only a matter of time you're going with that. Steve, have you got an alternative? No. <laughs> no, I haven't. You're going to watch? Yeah, I'm going to watch it. Okay. Well, probably watch after 10, 10 seconds before the off and then okay. either back or lay. <laughs> <laughs> if it's 7 to 4, you'll lay it. Yeah. 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 Uh, You'd be I, right. I did like Knickerbocker Glory. I like what you said about the run at, Sa at uh, Ascot. Ascot, was very yeah. good. Um, and I, there's obviously scope to improve. Like so many in the race. I mean, the main line is probably going to improve. Blue King Duru is going to improve, I st still think. Um, so it's hard to be adamant about this race, I think. Yeah, just the thing that stands out to me when you go through uh, the, the entries uh, for it and the weights is the fact that uh, only a matter of time is carrying 10-3. Mm. When you look at Nick of Arc Glory, 11-9, the main line, 12 stone, um, punctuation that you mentioned, 11-11. Jim Coco, who ran yeah. a nice race uh, in Foss last, the last day, carrying 11-7. So it's getting a stone and a half from a lot of horses, do you know? Okay. And I doubt if this time next year the horse will be off 115. Or 105 in Ireland. Yeah. All right. Lovely. I think we've covered all the racing that we can for the week ahead. Um, but good luck if you are uh, picking anything at Cheltenham or indeed in the Troy Town. Once you eventually scroll through all the runners, um, we'll eventually get there. Uh, but that is a look ahead to what's coming up this week, uh, both in Britain and indeed in Ireland. Now, before we get into our best bets of the week ahead, just to let you know of a free-to-play Six Horses Challenge. It is available every weekend with prize pools available for five and four correct predictions, as well as a jackpot for all six. T's and C's apply. Now it's time to get Steve and Gavin's best selections for the week ahead. Uh, Gavin, no pressure, but you're going first. <laughs> I'd like Birdlet Road in the Juvenile Hurdle on the Saturday. I'd also like Good Risk at All is probably the bet of the weekend if it runs on Sunday in the two and a half mile handicap. It's also entered in a three mile in novice, I think on Saturday perhaps, but I'd love it in the two and a half mile handicap on Sunday. If it doesn't go there, Delta Work should win six to four on the Friday in the cross country. Okay. So anyway, to summarize, Good Risk at All on Sunday if, uh, if it runs in the two and a half mile handicap chase. Okay, so Good Risk at All is your principal best yeah. bet of and if he doesn't go there then we'll go for Delta Work on the Friday okay, then Delta Work then Burdette Road yeah okay keep your options open yeah absolutely why not have you got three best bets of the week as well Steve <laughs> I had one but I could throw a couple out there All I right. think um, so start with your number one okay number one is, is Broadway Boy in the 145 on Saturday that's yeah. the three mile listed novice chase um good. good risk at all's in there but I'm not expecting him to run so we could face Mr Coffee who's a lot more exposed uh, Broadway boy won a handicap hurdle at Cheltenham on his final start last season, then won at Worcester on his chase in debut. Beat Mufasa that day by nine and a half lengths. He ended up boosting the form with a win at Wing Canton on his next start. Mm -hmm. Obviously, Broadway boy then had to concede five pounds to Florin Porter uh, in a novice chase at Cheltenham. Um, that was over course, this course and distance. I thought he ran perfectly well that day. Uh, he's rated five pound inferior to, to Mr. Coffey. But he looks really progressive. And yes, yeah, nine to two with that 365 at the time of recording. Okay. So he'd be number so one. Numero uno. Uh, and then just a couple to note uh, that I didn't touch on in the other ones. Balbo has transferred from Milton Harris to Paul Nichols. He's entered in the Triumph Trial Juvenile Hurdle uh, on the Saturday. It's a race that Milton Harris had won previously in 2021 with Knight Salute and with Scriptwriter last year. Um, so I think that's interesting that Connections have already taken him out of Milton Harris and put, moved mm. into Paul Nichols so he can run on Saturday. So he'd have a strong chance. And then I put up Django Bay as my horse to follow last week. Um, the horse that finished second to him, tell her the name, um, is entered in the opening maiden hurdle on uh, Sunday at Cheltenham. Um, there's lots of interest in potential opponents in there. Um, but yeah, tell her the name, basically to give a form boost to, to Django Bay uh, from their run last time. Excellent. So just to recap that, uh, and I've written it all down, uh, 
good risk at all if he runs, but then obviously... On the Sunday. Sunday. It's, it's two yeah. different races. Broadway yeah. Boy yeah. on Saturday. Yeah. Uh, Burdett Road. Yeah. Balboa. Yeah. Delta Work. And tell her the name. I think I've got it. Well done. Six winners. Six winners. <laughs> wow. <laughs> if they stay shoot. apart. There's a lot of double entries, but certainly you'd want to be taking on Mr. Coffee in that three-mile novice chase anyway. Yeah, yeah well, uh, without question. I'm all over Broadway Boy in that. I think um, the, for, the Mufasa form is good. He was a pretty good hurdler, and he's done well over fences so far. Um, okay, I think we're nearly done. But before we do close things off, now, someone has told me <laughs> that the odds checker production team, vast production team, vast production budget, was assigned to spend a day with Gavin Lynch. Yeah. A day in the life. Yeah, imagine. Of Gavin Lynch. I get them every day. Wh when was that? How was that? How yeah, it was good. good. Uh, it was great. Did they genuinely spend the whole day with you? It was actually two days. There you oh, go. Wow, even yeah. worse. Uh, three <laughs> lads came over. They must have been stuck to get me. But um, uh, yeah, it was good fun. Uh, we had some laughs along the way. And um, yeah, I think it's coming out in the next couple of weeks. So it'll be a bit of a laugh. Okay, is there any, any teasers that you can throw at us? I mean, uh, what did you do? What did you do in that day? Did you go racing? Did you... We actually did go racing, and we also went to Laytown. Um, we went to my local uh, football pitch. Uh, we was went this in to... September? Sorry? Was this done in September? Or uh, it, was, it was, I Later. can't say. I'm just, oh, you can't say, no. sorry, <laughs> secrets. They secrets. give out to me if I say when it was done. But um, yeah, you have Paul Carberry, uh, you've got a famous Gaelic footballer in it, uh, Trevor Giles, who you haven't heard of, but... He would have been the Kevin De Bruyne of Gaelic football back in the 90s. Oh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, we, we, it was good fun and the lads were super. So yeah, it was very enjoyable. Excellent. Excellent. Have so. you had a, anything as exciting as that? No, <laughs> I'm looking forward to a day in the life of, of Gavin Lynch. Yeah. I just have to watch it. I cannot wait. Yeah. Um, and do you have a tip for the DP World Tour golf this week finale? I don't. I was slagging you earlier on that you never asked me on to snooker or uh, golf. But uh, who's here, playing? Here we go. Where has it been played? It's at the Earth Course in oh, Jumeirah yeah. in Dubai. Oh, yeah. Have you played there? No, I meant to go over in February, maybe. We'll see. Excellent. You have, have you played it? I have played it. And it's, it's is that the one lovely. with the 18th with the, the river in the middle of it? Which I found. <laughs> <laughs> all, my, all my balls are still there. Yeah. It's a very tough hole for... It uh, looks a great course, doesn't it? It is a great course. Yeah. Um, well, thank you both very much. Thank you. Thank you. Any golf? No. Analogies? No. Okay. No. All right. Well, thank you both very much. I've really enjoyed having you over, and so uh, has Steve, no doubt. Um, I cannot wait for the racing for the week ahead. It should be great fun. Cheltenham, of course, the, the focus of attention. And between Steve and Gavin, hopefully, there are a lot of winners coming your way. So thank you very much for joining us on this week's episode of Racing Weekly, brought to you by Odds Checker in association with Bet365. Uh, many thanks to both Steve Ryder, Gavin Lynch for joining me on the show this week. Uh, we did have some lovely comments about the show last week, so thank you very much for those. Uh, we're going to be back next week when Johnny Ward will also be coming over from Ireland. He'll be having a look at the new winter festival at Punchestown. But for now, from Steve, myself and Gavin, bye-bye.